This week we found out that microservices are evil. When Amazon put out an article talking about how they saved themselves a bunch of money from themselves by switching from microservices to monoliths. And of course, everyone just read the title and used it to support their existing views and spread it across the internet. I heard a lot of takes this week, starting with the serverless even count as microservices, which I mean, come on, we're just nitpicking here on definitions, aren't we? Or others stating that microservices are now dead and that even Amazon doesn't understand them. And this is just the last nail in their coffin. But if you actually read the article and saw what was going on, you'll see that they were using AWS Lambda and step functions to do a bunch of work around video processing. So they started with AWS's step functions, which if you don't know, that allows you to orchestrate different jobs within the AWS ecosystem. It's a really good tool, but it is very, very expensive. These step functions kicked off an AWS Lambda to start off the processing and then went to some compute units to do the actual processing, parallel execution. But for each step that this went through, it would have to move each frame of the video into Amazon S3 back and forth, incurring all those transfer costs. When they rebuilt it, they went ahead and ran the same process pretty much, but they went ahead and moved it over to a container instead of just individual functions. This brought me back to one of my early talks when serverless first came out and I talked about the cons of serverless and there are a whole bunch of straightforward ones that came up, but the last one I had was higher costs and a lot of people questioned because they believe that serverless was cheaper. Everyone said serverless is going to save you money and they believe that because you don't pay for idle services. But the fact is that every CPU cycle on a serverless instance costs more than a CPU cycle on a EC2 instance. And for that reason, it's a poor choice for long running jobs, high volume jobs, jobs with large data, which I would say video counts. If you have something with sustained processing, you're probably better off cost wise on an EC2 instance. Not only is there a lot of cost associated with it, but Amazon puts limits on how much you can use. So yes, it auto scales, it auto scales from nothing, but it also maxes out. Here you can see the quotas for AWS step functions, and it's actually pretty low. In addition to the quotas on step functions, there's also some extreme limits on AWS lambdas and how many can run at one given time. The default is a thousand and how much data you can process. So if you're processing terabytes of video, maybe it's not the best choice to go with. But the fact is people don't care about choosing the right choice. Instead, they've already picked a side. They've already picked their part in the war and they're gonna fight that their technology is the best. I've been seeing this since I started programming. It started with LAMP. You know, everyone on the LAMP side had to use Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Or maybe they wanted to use Meme for Mongo Express, Angular, and Node. Venom insists on Vue.js. And I'm just gonna say enough with the acronyms, enough with the dogma. Right now, all I hear is dogma around microservices for monoliths. Both sides think that their solution is absolutely perfect. But in reality, everything has trade-offs. As you go from servers, you get more complexity. You have to do more work yourself to keep it running, to keep it updated. As you move over towards serverless, you get less complexity and things are done for you. But of course, it's going to cost more because it does have that self-maintenance. So when it comes down to it, it's not about which side is better. It's about using the best tool for each and every job. You need to pick the best technology based on what you're trying to build and what your client needs. Unless, of course, we're talking about JavaScript. Always bet on JavaScript.